Hi, this is Brian Poole. Today we're going to talk a little bit about how to digitize handouts and textbooks for students. Uh, it's a really easy process and it's something for some students on IEPs or possibly everyone in your school. If you're doing a one-to-one, -one, you might want to make sure you know how to do. So, uh, when we're talking about digitizing handbooks or handouts, we're going to do it with our printer. So we're already going to our printers every day to copy those handouts uh, for some students. And most current printers have the ability to scan documents as a PDF. Uh, some printer suppliers, renters, contracts uh, disable that functionality so they can make you pay more to have it. Uh, if that's the case, get a new supplier because that's ridiculous because uh, it's already built in. Um, that's what we did to make sure that we had that functionality, but it's just an add-on if that's the case and you don't see this functionality, but most places it's part of it. Uh, when it comes to scanning, there's going to be two things that we're going to use. We're going to use address books and network drives. Address books are for frequently used addresses, and they're really easy to modify. So if you're an office person that's uh, scanning to PDF a lot, you want to make sure your address is on the frequently used list, or any staff member that's doing it, or in the case of a special needs student, you might have somebody you want their address in there so you can scan to them really easily while you're doing your copies. Uh, for the rest of your students. For network drives, that's something that needs to be set up by your tech staff, uh, and those are really for larger scans. Um, when it comes to something like a textbook, which we scan here by chapter uh, to keep them small, they still can sometimes exceed the limitation that will go out in an email. So we set up network folders for that, and that network drive is shared to everyone on the staff so they can easily scan their document to a network drive and then go and fetch it uh, when they get back to their computer. So those are the two things we're going to uh, really talk about doing here today. Now, this demo is with um, our copier, but uh, all of our models are slightly different and they all have the basic same uh, functionality when it comes to that. So when you come up to your copier, you're just going to uh, use it just like you do with one uh, slight difference, and that's you're going to send it to an image. So you can do this right after you're done with your regular copies. You put it in just the same as if you were doing a handout package uh, and making sure it's in there uh, snugly. Then when you go down to make your copy, one of the options you're going to see is the ability to image send. It's normally set to copy, but you're going to do an image send instead, which means it's going to make an image from that thing you're copying. So you hit the image send button, and just like you do when you're copying, you have to tell it if it's a two-sided document. So in the case of our pr printer, we go to the condition settings, and we go to the original button to tell it the original is a two-sided original. So when you push on there, you just see that there's a two-sided option. So you want to make sure it knows that it's going to do both sides of your document. You say OK. And then basically you're done as soon as you tell it where it's going to go. Now, what we're seeing here is the address book for this particular copier. There are four people on the frequently used list that automatically show up. But then there's also that alphabetical list that you'll see down there below. So if, it, if another staff member wants to use it, they'll have to go to their alphabet button. Uh, if I'm going to use it, I can go right there. And if I was going to do a network drive, I'll show you how to do that next. So I just hit copy, and then it goes through, makes that handout, and sends it off to the email address that I just specified it to. Even the che in the case of an extremely large textbook, it still only takes about 30 seconds to digitize it. So it's something that you do once and you're done and you've got that uh, digital copy of, of that particular item. Now, when it comes to doing textbooks, uh, you obviously aren't going to want to go and uh, flip through all the pages of a textbook, not to mention the fact that um, you would get really bad copies doing it that way. So in the case of a textbook, you're going to have to sacrifice one, and you're going to want to separate it by chapters when you do that. So the first thing you're going to do to, uh, you're going to want to make sure you got one of your better textbooks that doesn't have a lot of writing in it, or a brand new one. You want to take off the binding on the left-hand side, which really is easy. Um, you just slice down the left-hand side, and then it just pulls apart. Uh, and once you pull those chapters apart, you're going to want to scan them by chapter. So using a nice uh, industrial size 
paper cutter is your best friend here you're going to want to make sure you get a nice even slice and I wouldn't do it with one of those cheap ones that um, some of us have in our classrooms this one's got a nice um, lever that puts pressure on it and makes it a perfect cut when you do it so hopefully you've got one of those uh, accessible in your teacher center that you'll be able to go and cut off all the glue binding at one time now you're going to scan this chapter just like you did with a individual handout the only difference is it's slightly larger and the file is going to be bigger so you may need to scan it to a network drive instead So the only difference when we're doing it to a network drive is you have to find the drive. It has to be pre-set up by your uh, tech staff on the printer settings. In our case, we've got one called Book PDF Scans. That we, When we select it to there, it's just going to go to a network drive that I have access to back on my PC. This really is not required for some documents, but as soon as you get pretty big, um, you're going to see that uh, you're going to need to do... Um, do it a little different to a network folder. So those things need to be set up um, by your tech staff. Uh, really, they only take a minute or two to do, and it's a one-time setup. In the case of our district, we have one folder that everybody uses, everybody has full access to, so you just go get it and, and copy it off of there uh, when you're done to your own PC. In the case of a larger district, uh, tech staff may want to do a separate folder for each scanner or for each teacher center, so those teachers don't get confused with too many documents in too many other places. So the question then is, uh, what are we doing this for and what's the advantage? Well, I'm going to show you an application on iOS called Notability uh, that costs $5.99 if you're getting a single copy, but if you're doing it for your district, it's $2.99 a piece for 20 or more copies. And the great thing about Notability is the teacher's done as soon as they do that scan. There's no additional work, but I wanted to show you what exactly you get out of it and um, why you may, might want to have uh, this application uh, available to you. Notability allows students to have all their handouts and textbooks in one place, allows them to easily bring them in, and they can write and type and do anything on there with no further action uh, by the teacher, because really the idea here is to, to have these things available for the student, but not to overly cumber uh, the teacher with too many additional tasks. So we're going to take a look right now at uh, an iPad that I've got set up, and uh, right now this is the uh, iPad that has Notability on it, and I'm going to go through the different steps and what uh, Notability does. Now, um, when I go to Notability, uh, the big thing here is I, I've got one open that's got nothing in it, and it's set up on this particular iPad to use... Um, Google Drive uh, because most students can easily have a Google account and it would be the easiest way to share documents to them so those you could set up a Gmail address as the thing that scans to and it goes straight to that so we'll take a look at uh, Gmail first and what that document looks like coming in so uh, here's a couple documents scanned um, from the copier and they're sent to us and when I go here I can just click right there and save that document to drive and say I'm gonna put it with my textbooks in my textbook folder and I'm gonna move it there and I can do the same thing with the other scan I'm gonna go ahead and just say save it to drive and in the textbooks and this is something that the student has to do but uh, the teacher may or may not know how to do so when I go to drive now um, if I look on my Google Drive, I've got a folder that I already made called uh, textbooks, and those things are already saved in there. And you can see I did the network folder thing with a couple chapters of an eighth grade health book, just to throw them in there to show you that um, those can be easily uh, dragged and dropped in there uh, just as well. So if you had something like our um, drive for textbooks, you could go to that drive. I'm going to bring that over here. And so any of these books have already been scanned, and if I wanted to put the biology textbook on this student's, I just drag it right over there. It's going to upload into Google Docs. And again, um, I'm done. That's, that's there. So let's go back to Notability so I can show you what that looks like. So on the Notability app for the student, they are going to have to have some, depending on their age level, some assistance from 
uh, their parent, but there's a button up on the top right that allows them to go ahead and import things that are now on there for the Google Drive. So all the teacher had to do was to email it, then the student does the side of adding it to the Google Drive and all those things that we just saw there right there. So let's take a, a, one of these handouts that I sent myself and I can't remember which one was the right one so I'm going to try this one first and I click on there and you see it downloads and then it says it's going to import this and you, all the student does is create new note and I'm going to say that a couple of these pages I didn't import right because they're uh, double wide so I'm just going to do the the ones that I actually set up right now when I open that document as a student it looks the same as all the other kids oops I had my pen on and I didn't mean to do that erase what I just did there uh, so it's exactly the same as all the other students have but now they have it right there on their iPad and what you're looking at is the iPad screen and the student could uh, if they're a student that needs to type, by the way, you could plug a regular keyboard into an iPad if you didn't know that with a little uh, $6 doggle. So if they need a full-size keyboard, if not, they could use their finger and select the pen tool and just mark what the correct answers are just like they would uh, if they were doing it uh, another way. They can use a stylus if they want to. Uh, in my case, I've got some different tools that I, I'm uh, trying here so if I use the stylus I could just as easily go up here with the hand and then use that stylus as, as well Boy, it's not working as good as my finger is though that kind of surprises me so you can see though that the student can then just go through here and slide through the, the work and when they're done then uh, they're just gonna go and say they're finished so they're gonna send this back to uh, you so they can just say hey I'm gonna go ahead and email this and they would be able to have your email then in uh, their address book and they could put the actual name of the of the file in there and then on your side you would get back that homework with all the markups looking just like you scanned it and with all their answers and stuff and obviously you can still have them put their name at the top you can have them do anything you normally would have them do on the paper but now they they're doing it all digitally now when it comes to something that they might need to type in uh, they can just as easily if they're a student that needs to type all I have to do to type is touch this T button up here and then wherever I type It just goes right in there, just like they typed typed into a Google, or I mean into a uh, form that you might have set up. The nice thing about this is you don't have to do any of that because Notability lets them type right on top of anything, and they can access that whole thing. Whatever kind of worksheet you have, it can be reading, writing, no matter what it is, if they hit the T and push the button anywhere, now they're typing right there on their form and if they've got a keyboard set up they don't have the pop-up keyboard happen if I go ahead and plug in my keyboard over here so I'm gonna try to do without knocking everything on the floor if I do that then when I'm using the iPad I don't have to have the pop-up keyboard anymore because I've already got a keyboard on here. And you know what? I don't think it found it when I plugged it in afterwards. So uh, I won't be able to show that, but it does work, I promise. So that's what Notability does. The other thing is, because it's all in one app, I can go and, for instance, if you gave them the textbook themselves, uh, you can go ahead and download a textbook right onto here as well. and the student can use the exact same app to access the textbook that you gave them in class. So one of the nice things, however, with this is, unlike in class, they can now highlight things if they want to in class, 
They can take notes in their textbook if they wanted to while they're in class. They can type things and they can even go so far as to if they wanted to record you and what you were saying in class uh, as far as taking notes while you were teaching something, they can do that as well. And then they have that audio note uh, that they have in there as well. So it's really nice. They can make folders over here on the left hand side. So if I wanted to make additional folders, one for each subject, I could easily do that to organize things and then I could keep my math book and my math handouts in one folder, my uh, reading things in one folder, whatever classes a student has. They're able to keep those things all separated and easily uh, organized. So that's it. Uh, really didn't need to show you the rest of this on uh, Notability. Kind of wanted to show you the advantage of using this app. A student uh, like my son, for instance, then wouldn't have to carry around any textbooks. They'd all be in one place, including all of their handouts, all of their worksheets, everything would be in one location that he would be able to do all that stuff with. And uh, either write with his finger or write with um, one of several um, pens that are available out there. And I've got a little uh, picture of some of the pins uh, that are available. We've tried a couple different ones. And all of them, I'm going to say, are, are OK. Uh, none of them are uh, perfect. And this picture came out terrible. But uh, I'll let you see. They have ones that are very thick, like a Crayola, Crayola crayon. They have some heavier metal ones that are bigger for uh, a, a hand that might have pro problems gripping. And then they've got regular pin size ones that have very fine tip uh, points on the end as far as uh, that goes. So that's it for the introduction on how to do uh, scan handouts and what the advantages of doing that are. Thanks.